Captain Albatross here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew. We have our usual suspects of AD or Alpha Dean. We have Spigs 18 or Anthony. And Dean, what are we doing here tonight? <laughs> well, it looks like we got a familiar face. I think this guy is stalking us. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but we got hemmed up today. And, you know, he was like, um, you have me on your show or it's going to be trouble and consequences. Well, not other than Andrew Marlowe of Marlowe House, our good friend, you know, fellow geek in the world, loves to talk about gaming. You know, we're all cypher heads here. So we're here to talk to Andrew about uh, the cyberpunk genre and how we can do it in cypher and, you know, a great little product he's got going on. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to kick it off. You know, Andrew, you got anything you want to say, anything you want to plug before we start getting into all of this? You know, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm Andrew Marlowe. Um, I am a freelance game designer and now self-publisher um, for a for, for Marlowe House. And uh, Marlowe House is our our family imprint, uh, started by my wife and myself, Monica Marlowe. And uh, our first product, uh, first official product for the uh, uh, Cypher Creator program is uh cypher burst blood and chrome so uh the first portion of that is the technopunk descriptors release i so. got to read that today that was awesome and i uh, was privy to read the second part as well <laughs> so we won't give any spoilers but that's also quite awesome but before i even get started guys uh please if you find any kindness in your heart Give us a follow here on, on um, Twitch or give us a follow on YouTube. We'd greatly appreciate it. We're trying to get our counts up at both platforms and, you know, leave a comment in the description below on YouTube too, you know, to appease the algorithm gods and uh, we'll love you for it forever. <laughs> but speaking of which, cyberpunk, you know, I the first thing I'm going to ask, Andrew, because I saw on Facebook before we even get into, you know, on the product you wrote, you responded by saying that someone told you that cyberpunk cypher system wouldn't be able to handle the cyberpunk genre, and this led you to want to create a problem, uh, you know, a product to prove them wrong. Is that true? That is more or less accurate. We we had a, it was it was a pretty it was a pretty uh, kind discussion, but it was it was definitely a spirited discussion. It wasn't one of the, you know we have a really great cipher community. And somebody was like, you know, they're just better games for it. Cypher system doesn't handle gear. It doesn't do all this other stuff. And I'm like, cyberpunk's not about the gear. <laughs> cyberpunk, sure, the gear's important, but you don't need a gear list to do cyberpunk. What you need is that style over substance, that uh, gritty rebellion, um, and personal stake stories in... It, that dystopian future it's it's a feel not a set of mechanics and i think honestly cypher and the more i dug into it the more i started like uh building my my rebuttal the more i was like oh my gosh this needs to happen <laughs> so that's that's how this actually started was there was a we had a discussion it was about a year ago on social media and it went back and forth and it was finally decided, you know, let's, I'm just going to agree to disagree, but now I'm releasing my rebuttal in, in a form that other people can actually go out, play and enjoy. Now, Andrew, wasn't that the show, the, 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 uh, the, the chat we were on together that night? I, I think I was there for that when you guys were, we were kind of going back and forth about it and talking. Is that what you're um, talking about? We may have talked about it, but no, it was actually a, a discussion thread on Facebook on one of the Cypher pages. Oh, uh, okay. It might have been your page. It might have been just the general Cypher page. I don't yeah. remember, and I couldn't find it because um, it was a year ago. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember the, the text, chat, but I remember we talked about it on a stream, on one of your streams, too. We, we probably did talk about it again on one of my streams, just because it was it's it's one of those things that once it came up, I haven't been able to let it go for a year. 
so let, let's talk about that a little bit before we get because I think this is interesting, right? I, I isn't that like the problem with any generic system, right? Like whenever you're a fan of a system that covers multiple genres, the the reply from you know non-believers or whatever system that you're a fan of always is, well, this does it better, right? And I guess the argument, or not even an argument, but my point would be, you know, the, the benefit to having a universal system is, yeah, it may, you could say that about pretty much any game. Like I run, Star, we both run, all, matter of fact, all three of us has run Star Wars and Cypher system. I think all four of us have. <laughs> I've played in at least. Right? No, I was, yeah. I was counting you, Andrew. I was, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, um, I was the one I was probably. I, don't, I, I haven't sure. done Star Wars, but I have done Space Opera. Yeah, right. You know, and the argument would be like, oh, why are you running Star Wars and Cypher, right? But part of the benefit is is having that universal system that has a simplified rule set that you can say, hey, look, give me forty minutes or give me two hours, and we'll, we'll play Blade Runner. You know, we'll play whatever. Right. And of course, the, the more comprehensive rule set, the more focused rule set is going to have more the, the minutia of whatever that setting is. But that's not why we play Cypher System. So, like, I never understood that argument. You know, like, oh, hey, play Cyberpunk Red. You know, yeah, it's probably going to have more information in it, but Cypher System gives you something entirely different. I, right. I look at it this way. When, you, when you're talking about using a... Um, a universal system, you know, whether it's Cypher system, Savage Worlds, you know, what have you. What it allows you to do as the GM is make it your game. You know, it gives you that, it, it gives you the ability to bring the evocative nature or the feeling that you see, that you have seen in your mind's eye for that setting. And there's nothing wrong with, like you said, there's nothing wrong with playing uh, you know, aliens or cyberpunk red, you know, I've used xenomorphs in any game, any and every game I've ever played from D and D to whatever I've thrown a xenomorph in, but the alien game is really, really solid when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Anthony, you know what you do, you have flexibility, you have ability to kind of hand wave certain things that don't make your, you know, they won't weigh your game down and allow you to keep things moving in a manner that works for you, you know? So I, I definitely agree with you guys that, uh, you know, it, it works. <laughs> you know, I, I like my universal system and I've yet to find anything that I haven't been able to make Cypher system work for. And I, let, let's, let's, let's be clear here. There are, there are games out there that do niche lines very well so you've got shadow run and cyberpunk red or cyberpunk 2020 whichever your flavor is um that handle the cyberpunk genre very well it's what they were designed to do and they've got very loyal fan followings yes what absolutely. you get when you what you get when you run gurps or cypher system fate savage worlds is you get as dean said the system of your choice to to put that into and then there are certain systems like cypher and fate that are so open and flexible that i mean there are so many different ways to approach how to do cyberpunk in cypher system and for my product line we've been calling it technopunk because in modern era um we're getting into a lot more varied kinds of technology and cypher handles all those too really well and it, it's a chance for us to kind of put something out there that's going to be a little different than uh you know shadow run cyberpunk and you know the other myriad games that already exist um, in that techno technology punk genre. All right. So right. what was um since you, you mentioned that, right? Um like is this a series of books? Like, do you have a setting plan? Or um, at the moment, the setting is um under discussion. 
<laughs> we'll say it's it it's very very much in development um however um there are uh a number of releases already planned we are we are partially written on the first three um and then we are partially written on i don't even know how many others because this originally started off as a project that we were calling blood and chrome and it was intended to be a large like omnibus version of cyberpunk and the more i wrote the more i needed to write and so we kept writing it in chunks we would write you know uh, we wrote a bunch of descriptors, and then we wrote some stuff about types, and then we wrote some stuff about flavor, and then we did some other stuff. And the more into it we got, the more we kept adding things on. Oh, look! Now we need a month. We need we need a, a, a tech bestiary. You know things that you know for the players to go and fight. We need people for them to talk to. So there's NPCs that we'll need. So there's like this you know best Jerry portion that's out there um that were that is in the in the, the in the works we've got an entire equipment thing that i don't know where that's going to go in the release schedule but there's uh a bunch of pages written on tech and gear because you know again comes back around to while we can do tech and gear through descriptors and foci and uh types there are going to be things that you're going to want to add. And we understand that. So it is a multi-layered approach. And what I did, um, we sat down and we were like, all right, well, we, we have to get the, we have to start getting this stuff out. We can't keep sitting on projects. And so I took um, our first chapter and I started breaking it into pieces and, um, I kept some things to the side. I added some new stuff um, because our our descriptors list wasn't wasn't quite as long as it is now. Um, but there were things we had talked about that I was like, well, we'll put that on the back burner and we'll come back to those. Um, well, now that I was putting it on the front burner and going to release the the descriptors uh, PDF, they had to be written. So we have some of the same issues with uh, the next chapter, which will be uh, the Technopunk types. Um, there's some stuff that still needs to be finished in there because, again, we were just kind of picking up and moving along. And so now we're going to go in, reorganize how we're presenting it, and present it in a serial format as opposed to an omnibus format. Although the omnibus, because I really want to do this in print, um, is still on the horizon. Um, think of this as like a reverse Kickstarter. We're going to sell lots of little things, and those are like your bids, your, your, your pledges, rather. Um, we get enough of that done, I can expand the, uh, uh, the money that I have to invest in the bigger omnibus and be able to do you know additional writers do better art um because right now i'm using stock art that i bought like 15 years ago when i thought i was going to get into the 20 boom but it's good really stock good. art yeah it looks really yeah. good and i and i will say this you know i i actually read this like four times already you know for the amount of pages and the price point you pretty much touch all the major descriptors that you would want if you were starting a cyber, you know, a cyberpunk style, technopunk style game, you know, you, like I don't want to get into the actual descriptors as far. But you can list the names. You can talk the names. Yeah. I'm, I'm not no. worried about. I'm not worried about that. People, I, I didn't post it online, and I should have. To be honest, I should have probably put that in the descriptor, in the description, the descriptor. But, but, <laughs> I, but you basically hit all the, you know, like the genre types, like for descriptors that you would want to play, you know, the gene sculpted, you know, the 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 nomadic, mm -hmm. the, you know, the boosted, Robo. the person that takes all the stems. And, Robo, spacer, network yeah. sensitive, all that stuff. Yeah, you 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 hit a you hit a lot of the iconic, 
you know, like styles of gameplay you would think of when you think of cyberpunk. So um, Thank you, you call it technopunk. How do you define that? Well, all right. So I look at technopunk. Uh, so cyberpunk was the, the, the put ourselves back in the 1980s. And a lot of the cutting edge technology in the 80s was all the computers. And William Gibson, uh, Sterling, and uh, 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 so many of the other early Philip cyberpunk, Dick. Philip, Philip K. Dick. Dick, going back, going back even further, you know, um, they imagined a world with computers. They imagined uh, the technology of uh, machines because that's where things were. Uh, people were concerned about automation in factories and that the robots were going to basically, you know, take over human jobs. And, you know, this was all in the news, as I recall it, you know, in the 80s. We had all these, you know, concerns about, you know, technology and corporate America was, you know, you know, it was all kind of blooming and exploding. And one of the things that I recently came across on social media, I want to say that it was, um, oh, um, why can I not think of the the, the game designer um, from our Talsorian games all of a sudden? Um, from? Mike Pondsmith. Oh, okay. I'm pretty certain it was Mike Pondsmith, but it may have been it may have been somebody else. But they were basically like, you know, um, today looks very much like a cyberpunk setting, and cyberpunk was meant to be a warning, not a roadmap. <laughs> and um, when you think about all the things that were on people's minds and all the things that worried people in the 1980s, computers and robotics were the big things. Um, flash forward to today and you know living in the world of the coronavirus bio stuff is a big deal the environment is a big deal i mean not that the environment wasn't a big deal in the 80s they were talking about the hole in the ozone layer and everything else and that definitely plays into cyberpunk uh, no doubt but um all of these things we keep adding new technology i mean we're living in a cyberpunk age um we may not be plugging directly into the internet via you know trodes to our heads, but it is every bit as pervasive and important in people's lives as William Gibson predicted it would be when he wrote Neuromancer. So, so I mean, we've got people with cybernetic hearts, basically, and we've had those for years. We've got people with genetic transplant, you know, uh, with trans you know transplanted organs they're vat growing and cloning and doing all this stuff and so techno punk is sort of the evolution of cyberpunk cyberpunk was definitely rooted in the 80s and the science and concerns of the 80s but as we have come further forward there's so much more and so that's why i'm leaning on techno punk um and even even you know in the '90s and things, we have stories that would be that would fit right into this. Gattaca, it's that dystopian future where only the people who have the right genome get to be successful. Um, that's totally totally the genetics of a technopunk setting. Um, yeah. And then for more modern things, you know, uh, it was a handful of years ago, we had Repo Men, which is a remake of uh, a movie Repo I've the Genetic. <laughs> well, actually, was, I didn't see the remake. I saw the original. There have been a number of a number of versions of it. Um, but, you know, the, the, the more most recent remake, people actually, you know, got out there and saw it um, in larger numbers. But it was, you know, basically all about genetic repossession oh, we gave you this genetic heart but you know you didn't make all your payments so and that's technopunk that's that's the that's the genre that i'm writing for here it's you know cyberpunk it's biopunk it's uh you know all these things and we'll get into more of that later um when we start talking about the other uh science 
because uh, we're going to do essays and things with these. Um, the first volume has a little bit of an introduction into what we consider technopunk, and it's got a large section of recommended reading and viewing. Um, some of which I haven't even had a chance to go read. They're now on my reading list. They're my watch list for uh, things to go find to read because I sought recommendations from people. And some of the recommendations I got, I was like, never heard of that one. I need to go read that one. Uh, but a lot of them on that list I have read, I'm very familiar with. And um, it's a genre that I've been infatuated with for 30 40 years now you know it's funny you talk about all of these all the, the books and anthologies you have up now every movie you have up and television show i've watched but the movie the books now i have like at least 10 more books to add to my audio book list that you know i listen to at work you know i'll be i'll be honest i think i have watched everything in in, in the uh watch lists but i the 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 books on the other hand there were things that were older that I hadn't found yet. Yeah, it's about 10, it's, I, I see about 10, 10 titles and they all look really good because I'm familiar with the authors. Mm -hmm. You know, like the stuff by Stephen Burns I had never read or listened to or whatever, but I know Stephen Burns' work, you know. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. If you've not read Gorgon Child and Street Lethal and I forget what the third one was called, oh my word, you will love them. They're like right up your alley. Oh yeah. Um, I, it's all about uh, this character named Aubrey Knight, and he is a zero G null boxer. <laughs> so nice. it's got that whole like you know martial arts movie side, cyberpunk side. I think it'll be right up your alley. Oh yeah, well Stephen Burns is a really cool guy. I met him at a writers convention one year, and you know I've read his other stuff, his alternate history stuff. So this should be just as good. So, but yeah, I'm pretty, I'm excited. I, I, like I said, I read it, read your, read your supplement and I can't wait to start using it. It's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how some of the stuff plays out, you know, for a cyberpunk uh, world. Yeah. So one of the things I would like to do, um, and it was funny, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning. Um, so you were asking about a setting to go with it and, um, I was talking to him, talking to a friend of mine. I was like, you know, um, we want to do, we want to, we want to cyberpunk our hometown and, you know, but I'm not entirely certain I want to cyberpunk the whole hometown. <laughs> um, and so this morning I was, I, I, I was driving to work and I gave him a call and I was like, so, um, what do you think of this idea? And I pitched to him the idea of a, of a, at least if not the campaign itself, a book for the campaign that is uh, basically just a company town um, doing an arcology. And I had some things I was like, you know, and I really want to do, and I live in Cincinnati. And if you've ever watched uh, Cincinnati WKRP, you know, yeah. uh, the old sitcom or almost or, <laughs> if you remember in the opening to that and pretty much any show about cincinnati there's a there's a fountain that is pictured and i was like you know i want to do this place i want to do i want to do the tyler davidson fountain as a centerpiece to one of these corporate buildings you know somebody's yeah. bought it and so he's like that's a really cool idea and I was like, yo, maybe I'll make that as like a centerpiece for the, the company town. And uh, we talked a little bit more and he threw some other ideas at me that went back to the original idea of doing the entire city. Um, but I got to work. I opened up the, the newspapers to throw them out on the, uh, the counter. I noticed that the Tyler Davidson fountains on the, the cover of the uh, one of the local papers. And I don't think anything of it. Um, and I come home to Facebook and a guy I used to work with who works for uh, our local paper was talking about how proud he was to get to get to write a cover article for, uh, you know, cover a, pa a page one article for the paper about the fact that the Tyler Davidson Fountain is 150 years old today. 
Oh, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'm definitely doing this now. It's going it's in. It's fate. <laughs> you it was meant to be. You mentioned settings and genres, right? So let, let's talk about just cyberpunk, the, the whole genre in the RPG form. Were you a shot? And this could, everybody can answer this, but were you a shadow run or a cyberpunk guy? Because I know that growing up, the, those were two different cliques. <laughs> <laughs> in, in in my circle, they were not two different cliques. <laughs> um, they were two different phases. <laughs> um, but we started with Cyberpunk 2013. And that was where I first cut my teeth was on that box set. And we played it so much that my box set fell apart. <laughs> um it, you know, it just the whole thing uh disintegrated. Uh, for a long time, I kept the top portion of it because I just liked the images, uh, the the artwork that was on the front. As simple as it was, I liked that artwork. So it it actually hung on my wall <laughs> as artwork for a while, um, because the box just fell apart and I wasn't gonna get rid of it. Um, so 2013, and then they released 2020, and we moved to 2020. And for a little bit, we were snobs. We were, you know, like, don't put your magic in my in now, my. I was, gonna, I was gonna say that because where I grew up at, it was a little but, different. It was but, the, you know, like don't put the peanut butter in my chocolate. Like, right. I don't, don't put elves in my cyberpunk. I don't. But <laughs> but one of the guys bought the book, and you know, we started flipping through it and the Elmore art on the cover and the other stuff inside, we were all just like, all right, we got to try it. And so we did. And so that was, that was a phase for a while. Um, and then I knew a bunch of other people later who only played Shadowrun. Um, I was like one of the few people who would play both. And I had two different groups at one point. One of the groups was hard uh cyberpunk and the other one was hardline shadow run and i kind of played in both both pools you see uh, i was the other, uh, other way around my group like my normal group that i played with were they were seriously into shadow run right and the older kids this is you know the 13 14 year old me they were playing cyberpunk and i wasn't like cool enough to be in the older kid <laughs> so i i always want like i bought i purchased the cyberpunk books but i didn't really get to play it much at its height because i i couldn't find a group you know but my my local group of the kids my age they they were really into shadow run so i've i i like both systems but i think i have more practical experience with shadow run because that's what my group is playing at the it's time. kind of funny i was i was a lucky kid i got to play them both because all my high school buddies when high school we played everybody played shadow run mm -hmm. but i was in a gifted math program so i went to the local college you know two nights a week and i met up with the college guys and played cyberpunk with them so kind of like what anthony was saying it was always a lot of fun I enjoyed them both, you know. I mean, I, I could see the distinction because I guess, you know, if you looked at it, I always looked at cyberpunk like it was, uh, you know, it, it was Star Trek and Shadowrun was Star Wars, you know. It was-, yeah, it was that, is of, a, that is a good- uh, Yeah. You know, and that's how, I, that's how I just approached them both. And it was a lot of fun overall, but the, the thing about both, both genre, or should I say both games, when you looked at it, you know, it, it to me it was like cyberpunk dealt with, I guess you would say the the the, the social economical ideologies, and shadow and shadow run was the, you know, uh, was the was the corporate was was the corporate approach, you know, because you had the big industries and you had the big corporations that were doing all the crazy experiments on people and so on and so forth. So it was always those kind of ideas that I encountered. You know, we did with Cyberpunk, we did, you know, them stealing power and them stealing money and, you know, controlling the economics of, the, of, of how things unfolded. You know, it, it was pretty cool, though. 
Overall. Also, mechanically, they were quite different as well. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The thing and I found the thing I found was that if as long as you weren't like throwing yourself, well, even if you threw yourself on a grenade, uh, Shadow Run was a lot more survivable yeah. than was Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yes. Um, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk could get downright ugly, um, especially if you started in the uh, the the 2013 days yeah. before all the books exploded and all the options were out there. And they had an entire book dedicated to basically being a, a tactical war game. Yeah. <laughs> and it was... Yeah. So, uh, both of them were slightly crunchy. Cyberpunk was really, really crunchy. Cyberpunk was much Cyberpunk more crunchy. Was slightly crunchy. Yeah. Cyberpunk yeah. was crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, was a, it was, like I said, a lot of good things. I remember the guys that I played with, it was kind of cool because what they did was they actually built their game based on the old, I don't know, you know, a lot of people are out there may not remember this, but the old $6 million man TV show. And what they did was they basically had the concept that the OSR, you know, got basically taken over by corporate, by a huge corporation and started selling, you know, the, the secrets to cybernetics, you know, to creating, you know, your cyborgs and stuff. It was, a, it was a pretty wild game. It was a lot of fun, you know. Do you think that maybe the reason why someone told you that cyberpunk couldn't cypher system couldn't handle cyberpunk is because of the original crunch and the way the mechanics were designed for the i think that cyberpunk. i think that's a huge huge portion of that of that entire uh debate because uh cypher is not very crunchy and it's not gear oriented um and those are the things that both shadow run and um cyberpunk did very well and even uh gurps when they got into it the gurps is again it's a very crunchy universal system and when they did cyberpunk uh hey, they have like some books on it yeah, yeah it, one of them got them rated by the fbi so you know yeah. <laughs> um yep <laughs> but uh so i mean they're, they're everything that had come before that was successful in the genre um for the most part has been really crunchy and there you know uh there are d20 versions of it out there and again it's a very crunchy system and it's all about what gear you're carrying um i have friends who worked on one from uh uh gunmetal games called now i'm gonna i'm i'm embarrassed <laughs> uh uh are you talking about um uh What's the name? What's the name? Uh, System Zero. Maybe I think, but it's it's actually it's across it. They it, they've got it for uh, Savage Worlds, Pathfinder. Yeah, Under. yeah. Um, um, Zero. Hold on, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, but it's actually tied to the very first book on my recommended reading list. Um, You know, Cypher System has, like, Raven, I mean, um, Vert has some cyberpunk s Interface Zero. Inter yeah. yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Interface Zero. And again, and it's, it, they, they went to all the really crunchy systems. There's a Starfinder, Pathfinder, Savage Worlds. He, here's the thing that I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, man, because I know yeah, you're fine. making a point. No, I was saying Anthony, he, I know he's a very big point, but this is something that I've tried to get, you know, try to tell people about Cypher system. Cypher system isn't crunchy, but it can be, you know, it's just how you set up your game. You know, the thing I like about Cypher system and, and, and the lack of crunch is that it is cinematic in nature. So a lot of the cool stuff that you see, you know what, you can have it happen cinematically and that's what i've what i've started to see you know when you sit there and you watch you know one of those movies you watch blade runner or, or something like that it was a visual spectacle as well as a intellectual process and if you play it the right way you can role play those aspects out so I, that that's one of those things that i think people kind of miss I, I, I think, think you have to i'm sorry no go ahead I think you have to add crunch to certain for certain genres to work in cyber system. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean it's inevitable. Like 
like just listen to what Andrew was saying, right? You know, he he has to add just because you want to give the feel of the genre, right? So you know, there's, certain, there's certain genres that it's inevitable. We you have to add some crunch into your cipher system. A little bit of that peanut butter gonna get stuck in the chocolate, well, you know, yeah, because yeah. when you deal look with look, when you deal with with um, a genre like like um, cyberpunk, you know, you're gonna have to come up with additional weapons, additional equipment. And to make it can't be two, four, six damage as the only outlier for a weapon description because it's not going to give you the feel of cyberpunk. Absolutely. You have to add something else. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to argue that point. Mm -hmm. um, thus far, um, my plan is to not do a whole lot that changes the underlying mechanics. Um, because I think one of the things that Cypher System excels at is telling stories. And the crunch involved, we've got crunch, and we'll definitely be adding crunch. Um, but a lot of the stuff that we're doing is talking about how to reskin the existing crunch, um, which you'll see in Blood and Chrome 1, and you'll continue to see it in uh, subsequent releases, how to, how to reskin the existing crunch. For example, you've got Major Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. All right. Um, she is a full body replacement cyborg. Oh, wait a minute. We have a great question. And before we go down the route, okay. we should define crunch because we're confusing some people. All right. So, crunch so is from additional mechanics. Um, and and mechanics to explain things where cypher will say we have immediate short and long range another game will tell you you know point blank range is zero to 30 feet and then you have short range which is 30 to 50 feet and so on so it's very defined the crunch is a definition of the mechanics that you're going to use at your table um so to make that clear if you know you didn't understand what's going on yeah and a yeah. game like cyberpunk and stuff like that has mechanical definitions for just about any and everything you're going to do there are rules for burst fire there are rules for running around and doing you know like every action you could possibly do um, running and gunning. One, yeah running and gunning um one of my favorite examples of crunch is if you look at uh 3035 uh Pathfinder versus 5e. Um, you've got massive amounts of pages dedicated to feats, which are pretty much flavorful crunch. Um, they're just these discrete rules elements, uh, and you need lots of them for your character because those games are all built on the same basic chassis and they are very crunch heavy. You look at 5e, which is a more relaxed amount of crunch. It's a, it's a more uh, narrative friendly, um, less simulationist game. Um, a lot of the things that, that crunch does is simulate um, the world. So it's a lot of simulationist uh, game mechanics. And in you know, 5e, we've got a lot of more narrative stuff. Cypher is very much more narrative. And so the amount of crunch is minimized. Um, if you look at the core rules for Pathfinder 3530, they've got a huge section dedicated to feats in each of those. 5e, they're optional. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, and, and we, we have similar things in Cypher, but they're spread out differently and it's, it's a lot more flavorful. They're not as uh, mathematically and mechanically tight. And well, when I, I, let me hold on, D, let me finish because um, I want to go back to my statement because um, I, I think I agree with you in some sense, but I, I think that you didn't understand what I meant by like the, and I'm going to use Vert as an example of how they handled weapons, is they made each specific weapon. It, it would it still had the basic chassis of cipher system but mm -hmm. it was you know how cipher system has a, a, a handgun does two points of damage uh uh 38 special does two points of damage 
uh, 22, you know, stub, snub nose, does two points of damage. It actually defined, because I, in my, and, and I could be viewing it differently, but I, I think one of the, like, the major specialties of cyberpunk is the actual, the actual name of the weapon, the type of the weapon has to have some special specialty towards it. So what Vert did was that they took weapons, it might still do two points of damage, but it had a tacked on ability. Still, in, it, it's still defined within the Cypher system rules, but it added that little narrative crunch to make each, instead of saying, I have a gun, is I have a 38 special, it does this, right? And, right. I, and I think that that's something that can be added to Cypher system, it, oh, it can. It can. And to flavor it. Because well, I here's think, a, here's, uh, go ahead. What, what you're saying is actually true. I mean, what Vert did, they doubled weapon damages. They made it more lethal. All of that kind of stuff. Also attacked on abilities. On you, right, intact on abilities. And, and yeah. see, I can see the same thing happening for a cypher, uh, for a cyber punkish or techno, techno punk, as, as uh, mm -hmm. Andrew's calling it. We could just have a weapons book and you could like just tack on a static damage value. To your various weapons or you can tack yeah. on like you said an, a, an additional ability to the weapon um no different like i was saying about how i added crunch to cypher for my star wars game because i i recreated the but, but uh, I, I just i just want to let andrew know that that's what i meant i didn't mean like oh, okay. gotcha. well you there there are some things that might i all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna make a confession here <laughs> I have not really cracked open my vert book. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I love the guys that were behind vert. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I took a look at it when I first got it. It was not what I thought it was going to be when we backed it. Um, I am thrilled we backed it because I am, I am a huge proponent of all of this stuff being out there, more options and whatnot. Um, but it wasn't what I was expecting when I when I first put my when I first picked it up. So I did a little bit of reading through it the first time. And I was like, this is an interesting setting, but it's not what I was looking for right now. But I'm certain we'll come back to it. I, th I think the problem with that. And I went out and then I went out and I read the first I, I started to read the first book. I was going to say, yeah, it's adaptation of a book series. People and I got about about halfway through. I got I got a chunk of the way through the first book. And I said, I can't do this one. <laughs> um, there was stuff in it that I was just like, I, I can't do this right now. So I haven't gone back to it. Um, and I'm not saying the book was bad or it was not well written because it was really well written. And, but it was just not right now. And, you know, that, that's a, that's, a, that's a thing when you're reading. And I, because of that, it's just not something I've gone back to yet. Um, and, and so I haven't, okay. so, I, so I didn't see what they were doing, but, um, I do have some things that I wanted that I, I, cause I wanted to be able to bring something new to it. So there are some surprises in, in our weapons and gear, um, that use the mechanics that exist. And now I'm worried that I'm going to be recreating their wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm so mean, playing in this art stream, but I absolutely love Vert. So well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to get into right. the uh, Vert. Right, so I'm going to, I'm, I am going to ask a question. This will be a preview for people who are who are who are who are who are interested. Um, one of the things I was looking at doing and my uh, my playtest stuff for it is. Um, I wanted to for for a handful of things. Most weapons we were going to keep, you know, standardized, but we wanted to make some exceptional items that were not up to the level of artifacts, and we didn't want them to be one-off ciphers. And so, um, we were going to have some sort of specialized weapons. Uh, if you were playing cyberpunk, the the equivalent might have been like the Armalite 44, the enormous 44 mm -hmm. auto, gu auto gun that everybody carried around. Um, and so um, something in that vein for our game, uh, 
one of the ideas that I was I I've got notes on and I can't tell you exactly what they were for but instead of being differentiated by saying this gun always does xyz you can spend effort to do x great um so it tied it into the mechanics that exist and made it but it's it's there aren't a whole lot of those yet um we may get into doing more of them depending on how we do it but that's, uh, but that's that's way down the line but but the thing about it is put it this way andrew it, without you reading the vert book it's not like you're recreating the will that's something that i can honestly say is unique to, to you i i didn't see anything like that in the vert book myself that you're spinning okay well to that'll do it, to do something special but yeah, I didn't mean to bring up the vert thing as a whole. <laughs> no, 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 that's, no, that's okay because whole... vert is vert. But, is but it is in that wheelhouse of the it genre. It's totally and techno punk. Yeah, and it you is. Know. It is actually moved itself back up on my list of things to read. Um, <laughs> well, vert is actually, it, and it's a lot of fun to play. I've played a couple of games. I, I, I think it's, I, it's more like um, psycho it's like, punk. If, yeah, that, it's, if it's, it's I. I was calling it psychedelic cyberpunk. Yeah, right. Um, when I was describing it to somebody else at one point, because um, I it, I was like, you know, I don't do drugs, but I think reading this book, this is what doing drugs feels like. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean. It's it's it, it's actually a, it's good. I enjoy it for what it is, you know, and it's literally a. It's a, it's another path, you know. Yeah. I like the I like I like auto punk. I like, I, you know, your idea yeah. techno punk. I like, I like steampunk. I like diesel punk. I like ray punk. You know, I like mm -hmm. the punk, the, the whole punk ideology. Yeah. So it and all I, can, it can all can work, and I think you know as long as you continue to dip into your resources, you know, and talk to those of us, and you know, talk to the community in general, you'll get everything you're looking for and more. Oh yeah, and it, there's a ton of stuff out there that's worth that's worth looking at in 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 cipher and in other things. Um, I can't recommend highly enough that if you are a GM in any game, and we're talking cyberpunk, so it's especially point uh, on point for cyberpunk. But if you have not, and now that all right, so. Now that drive through is putting out all these things with all these companies that have been out of print for decades and you can get print versions of them. Um, if you do not get, uh, listen up you primitive screw heads for cyberpunk <laughs> and you're, you're a GM who loves GMing and you like cyberpunk in particular. Um, Yes, it is a 30, almost 40 year old book about a very specific game. Um, but the advice in it is timeless. And you can actually get the audio for it on Audible. Um, I just went back and revisited it uh, very recently because I was scrolling through Audible looking for something to read and it's like you primitive screw heads i'm like are you kidding me bye <laughs> uh, uh so just there so since you're running um we, we're talking about cypher system in the genre right what, mm -hmm. what are some of the things as a gm right that you have to look out for to catch the feel of a cypher i mean a cyber or techno punk setting using cypher system like what are some of the tools that you would all right, so high to give someone. So high on my high on my high on my list is uh, as I was kind of leaning in uh, before is use what's there, but use your imagination to reimagine what those things mean. So we were I was talking about Major Kusanagi. Uh, this is one of my my favorite examples of how to reskin things in in cyber in cipher system for cyberpunk. Uh, Major Kusanagi is a full body replacement cyborg. She's got invisibility and she's got all these other things. There's a lot of really cool stuff that she can do. Um, but one of the big things is that she's 
entirely robotic. So if you want to do that, you can approach it a number of different ways, but the way I would do it nine times out of 10 is to take on the foci um, uh, ab uh, abides in stone. Reskin it. Reskin it. Uh, abides in stone, uh, works for full body replacement, uh, emerged from the obelisk, works for full body replacement. Um, I don't need to create a thing that says, hey, here's how you buy full body replacement. Um, because here's the thing that, that, that the genre does in fiction that the, that the games that we had prior miss. The heroes of the stories that we've been reading, uh, whether we're talking about uh, Aubrey Knight, who's the Null Boxer, uh, whether we're talking about Major Kusanagi, whether we're talking about uh, Deckard um, in Blade Runner, the thing that makes them cool is not their shopping trips to buy more cyberware. Right. It's what they already have in them, whether that's mechanical or not mechanical. Um, they are already cool by virtue of being who they are. And who they are is defined by their character traits. So lean into the character traits that already exist. By the same token, lean into the story elements. Uh, so I would say that you're going to want to lean into uh, character arcs. Use those. Um, your cyberpunk stories, and I fell into this when we first started cyberpunk years and years ago. Our earliest cyberpunk games were D&D. Uh, &D. It was go raid the building, go collect the stuff, trade it in for more gear. And you just upgraded until your character was untouchable. The best cyberpunk games I ever played, the best Shadowrun games I ever played, um, came later when we got more nuanced and we got into telling the stories of the characters and the things that they were doing. The stakes need to be smaller and real. Um, there may be you know, massive multinational corporations involved. Uh, there may be you know, uh, world you know, potentially ending cataclysms just on the horizon, whether it's a corporate war, uh, starvation, uh, as we see in The Wind-Up Girl. Um, those things are all going on in the periphery, but our focus is on our characters. Um, Akira is a great example of this. Um, the storyline of Akira, we see that there are riots going on in New Tokyo. There's all this, you know, crazy stuff going on. You know, there, there are clearly sort of like these, you know, religious cultists and they're doing their thing and the riot police are showing up and, and you know, all these things are going on, but they're all in the background. They give us flavor. They give us tension uh, for the world, but we are focused like laser point focused on uh, Tetsuo and uh, Kaneda and their relationship and the relationship they have with their friends, but mostly this like brotherly relationship between Tetsuo and Kaneda. The stakes are there for those two characters, not because of all this other stuff going on, but because of the stuff that's going on between them. And that's where you need to keep your focus. That's actually you know, a that's super the... good point. Um, uh, now that you mention it, I never really thought of it in that way where again, there is this grand thing usually going on in the background of these cyberpunk stories, but it's actually focused on a minutia is a, a weird word to use. Cause it's, you know, it's kind of important what's mm -hmm. going on with them, but it's minutia compared to the, like, you know, the world right. that's at hand and you know, that's, it's super valid. And it's, that's that's awesome, that's awesome way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a point. I think what you just said though, kind of, I think works in general when you start talking about games what, like Cypher and Fate because they are mechanically focused, even though you can be superheroes, whatever. I mean, think about The Expanse. The Expanse has this, you know, proto-molecule that's going to destroy all of humanity, but the stories surround 
holding in his crew, mm -hmm. their life choices, their ideologies. And I think in Cypher, especially when you run a campaign, that's why you have character arcs. That's why you have character connections. And, and one of the things I have always liked to use that I've been using for years is that I like my players to give me background because I tie their background into what's going on. One shots are different, but when I'm telling a, a full blown campaign and I think that's, um, I think that's where Cypher shines. And I think that's why I, I see it being able to run anything. Yeah, and it, it, I, I agree with you. And it's particularly why I'm like, once we started talking about it, the more I was looking at it, the more I was like, this is the ideal type of system to run Cyberpunk in because it is the kind of system that lets you get in close on the characters. Now, I will have to say that I think Cyberpunk has an underrated rules element that did this. Um, it is one of the things that, um, when we first started playing it years ago, we abused the hell out of. I know that my friends and I may have re-rolled things a few times to get the benefits of certain things on our life paths. We were much younger back in those days, but they had a, they had a mechanical system called the life path. And it wasn't as uh, you're going to lose your character as, say, Traveler, but it had ups and downs it had serious consequences right and um those serious consequences and those ups were fodder for storytelling for the gm yeah uh, and it yeah. wasn't until it wasn't until much later that we really you know understood what we were doing um because like i said when we first started playing cyberpunk we were playing it the way i think that the other poster I was talking to saw cyberpunk, which is get the stuff, get the money, basically D and D on, uh, uh, automation, you know, cyber right. limbs and stuff. Andrew, like that. not to D &D. cut you off, but we got to get some, um, no, no, sure. Sure. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm very wordy. <laughs> um, uh, Infinite Construct brought up a great point that Voices of the Data Sphere is basically essentially a jacking in supplement to show you how to do all you know those aspects of cyberpunk. I, I also I also wanted to bring up the fact that um which we didn't touch on, but um you know you, you sort of touched on it a little bit, Andrew, with the lasting damage that I think of when I think of cyberpunk from years of playing cyberpunk, you know, you blow an arm off, you get a cybernetic arm and the lethality of cyberpunk, which is something also that has to be converted into cypher system. So I, I you know, before we cut off, I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that because, um, you know, that is something that uh, outside looking in, a lot of people say that cypher system isn't as deadly as other systems. And cyberpunk has a high death rate. So let, let's keep it real. So how do you guys plan to tackle that in Cypher system? Um, when I have all of the answers for that, I will let you guys know. <laughs> um, but that is definitely on my, my horizon of things to work out. Um, I have some outlines and some notes. Um, that was a section that, I had admittedly, for the most part, put off for the moment because that's, and that's one of the things that was holding up this book's release because I want to handle that well. And so I had gone through and I have bookmarked the, uh, the, the healing rules and the medic, you know, the medical rules, uh, which are pretty easy and straightforward. Um, I've been looking at doing some other things a little differently um because again i don't want to mess with the underlying chassis too much but there are things that occasionally you need to have a rules mod for um oh. we've seen it with you know the escalation of events with um uh the redlining in 
Stars in are fire. Stars are fire with the horror die, you know, with the horror tracking in uh stay alive. You know, there are methods by which uh Monty Cook Games has already made changes to that chassis that are appropriate to settings, and I'm not adverse to doing that. Uh um, well, I got a man, you should talk. Uh, I got a whole gritty hack that basically <laughs> uses the, the ideas that are already there. Remember, Anthony, yeah. where I, I used shock, I turned shock, uh, shock and um, madness into fatigue and something else, you know, for, for just that reason, you know, same concept, but just affecting things a different yep. way. That fatigue's a good one. Um, you know. because that is that is one of those things that we don't see in rpgs a lot um, I, I have a funny story about lasting damage that i want to tell my friend jason we used to play a lot of shadow on the cyberpunk when we were younger and every character he always wanted a cybernetic arm or a cybernetic leg or, so he would purposely blow something up and blow a body part up in like the first two sessions of every game of Cyberpunk we ever played because I'm getting a cybernetic arm somewhere or another. If the GM doesn't want to give it to me or if I didn't roll on it, I'm going to get one. And that's that was sort of like the beauty of Cyberpunk. You know, like you could, they could be lasting damage, but it could be a benefit in the long run of the story if yep. you had enough credits to, you know, pay for and, it all. And the other, the, sorry, so one of the other things on that front um, that I want to tackle, um, and this is and this is one of those things I want to tackle non-mechanically, um, one of the things that the cyberpunk RPG does is, and, and this is important when you're thinking about the fact that somebody's, you know, got their arm blown off. Um, and that's the, that, that humanity loss. I don't want to do it mechanically because we've got tons of people who are, uh, you know, who have, who have been disabled and they're not any less human for having, um you know augmented legs and you know we've got runners who who run on these like super fast cheetah legs now um and they're not psychologically different they're not penalized in the real world for having them but there is a certain point where you know there are things you can't do anymore and so I want to be able to talk about, you know, um, the the robo on um, uh, Teen Titans and Cyborg. Uh, no, no, in uh, the, the 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 TV show Titans and Doom Patrol. Oh, okay, yeah. Where he's completely been replaced, and he is so depressed because he can't taste anything anymore and he can't feel anything anymore and you know it's 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 a it's a it's a depth of character that i don't i i want to be able to have people see without exploiting it and without making it just a mechanical minutiae um so I, mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree that that's exploitation. You know? Well, and, and I, for the record, it, I it may not be, but it, but you can you can get there. Sensitive. For, yeah, for, you, uh, yeah, I know, but you can get there, and that's why I need. I'm gonna before we get to some of that stuff, I need uh, I need to pick up sensitivity readers, yeah. and that's you know. Oh, it's we money. can definitely hook you up with quite a few. That yeah, the big ones in the so, community. So yeah, I want to I want to make sure that when we do this, when we get to those points in our our storytelling and our 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 putting things out there, and that we have those resources available to us, and that's part of why we're doing this piecemeal too, is so that we can pay people to help us make this the right product long term. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of things that were acceptable in the '80s, that and the early '90s that are a little squeaky now, but are definitely part of the genre and should be approached. We just need to approach them right. Makes sense. I can I can get with that. Absolutely. 
I think we're running a little long on time here. I'm <laughs> sorry. That's because I'm chatty. If uh, anybody in the chat has any additional questions. Oh, well, Claire has a pretty good question. I'm not sure if it's being tackled by you, Andrew, and your uh, supplements here, but um, Claire says, I wonder, Cyberpunk is also known for really deep philosophical concepts. How do you make room for that in the mechanics? Um, I think a lot of those don't need to be in the mechanics. They need to be in the stories that you tell. And so if you're going to do them mechanically, the place I would start looking at those would be character arcs. If you're going to do a mechanic for them, that's where I would do them. Um, now, I love um, those deeply philosophical questions and the emotional kick that comes out of things. And um, Cypher has delivered that on multiple occasions. Shauna Germain has, has brought game tables that I have run to tears um, with Forgetting Doomsday and... Um, I've seen uh, people wrestling with the morality of options at the end of Skeen of the Blackbone Bride. So you can do those things already. You don't need mechanics that do that. Um, if you've not read those two adventures, I highly recommend them. Um, but they, they both kind of encapsulate what I think you can do with Cypher, which is you can get to those emotional, those emotional moments, make them really hit hard um, and hit right. You know, I was going to say that when you were saying that earlier, Andrew, about um, the mechanical aspects, you know, about, you know, people losing their humanity and things like that, you know, I, I looked at, you know, those old games and where you have to think about it. Those old games tried to do those things mechanically because the focus wasn't on the story. The focus wasn't on the, on the role playing. The focus was on the ideal of, of simulationism, you know, and you're, you're, I think you're absolutely right that a lot of this stuff can be addressed. I mean, if, if I were doing it, just, you know, throwing it out there, you know, as a suggestion, you know, it would be like that. If, I, if you know, you did a full body replacement, maybe a part of that would be, you know, in your, in, in how it affects you psychologically, you know, to bring some more role-playing fodder to the table, you know, like I said before, and what people write in as their, like, even with Anthony, Anthony, your latest, you know, your tallest thing, where you had everybody remembering their death. You know, those are solid pieces that you as a GM build upon to bring into the gameplay. And I think, you know, the more I talk Cypher, the more I talk with everybody and various things that people are doing, I start, I, I get a clearer version of why Cypher is such an appealing thing because I love the story. It's not about mechanics anymore. It's not about, you know, building the optimized character. It's about these great stories we tell. And anything that's going to bring the story to the table, I'm ready for it. I'm down, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Was there anything else left in chat? I think that was uh, the last question presented. Yeah. All right. So, Andrew, anything else you want to tell us about um, when's the next supplement coming out or anything else that you... All right. So, I am, I, I am currently in... Uh, wrap up on the writing for Cypher Burst 1.2. Um, oh, so I should actually talk about what Cypher Bursts are yes. a little bit. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so Cypher Bursts are um, a way for us to get some of these big ideas we've had out faster and in smaller pieces. And so the first round of Cypher Bursts um, are are blood and chrome books and so they will all be numbered one for volume one and a number for the issue number so it's sort of like the old uh module designations where you know, b meant basic modules and so they would number them uh with sort of a code up in the upper corner um 
in this case, we're doing cipher bursts, uh, which, you know, bursts for being short, um, short cipher bits. Um, the first round here is going to be uh, blood and chrome. And so it's going to be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. If we ever come back to blood and chrome, say we leave it for a while, when we picked it back up, we would pick it back up with 1.7 or whatever it was going to be. The idea would be to keep them all thematically linked together, numbered that way. Um, we have plans. We did a long running uh, stream series, which Anthony actually joined us for. Uh, we called Legends of the Wild Wastes, which was, which was a uh, Wild West anime, uh, mecha, supers, magic, fantasy, uh, genre mashup. It was insane and brilliant and um, Ton of I, fun. yeah. So uh, Legends will be one of our Cypherverse series at some point. We'll, we'll revisit that and it'll be, you know, for those we may change the way we number it. 1.2 1 and 1.3, 1. 1 point, those look really good for Cyberpunk. Um, for, <laughs> for something like Legends, it's more likely we'll probably go ahead and put volume back on. It'll be volume, volume one, issue two, you know, and we'll, we'll do it with a little bit more in world flair, but the whole idea behind the cipher verse is it's small portions of what would be bigger ideas that we can bring to you, you know, quicker and in smaller doses, which also means that the investment on a particular idea, um, you can you can jump in with this piece or that piece you know if you're running a cyberpunk game already for cypher and you don't need descriptors uh but you want new foci we'll have you covered um foci are coming uh if you want just the gear book that's coming um so we will have we will have different options if you want to you know, follow us from the beginning to the end, we would love to have you for the entire ride. And that's, you know, that's an option as well. So I would look for uh, the second one, probably not next week, but maybe the week after. So gotcha. that's nice. Awesome. Uh, anything you know, else with uh, is the model house Twitch stream coming back or? Uh, we are currently on hiatus, um, particularly with the amount of day job nonsense that we both have at the moment. Um, and the fact that now I'm writing, I'm back to writing more of my like full-time writing hours. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'd like to bring it back, but at the moment we're kind of on a holding pattern and how's monica doing hi monica i know she's yeah, we, i've been seeing her in the in the chat yeah we should she have was not she earlier. was supposed to be here with us tonight but she wasn't feeling well um so we should have said that like an hour and a half ago <laughs> <laughs> when she was actually in the chat <laughs> did, 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 yeah we should have <laughs> sorry dear <laughs> And real quick, uh, Andrew, it was trauma and fatigue that I reskinned Shock and Madness. Gotcha. So, uh, but I'll share it with you. You know, you take a look at it, you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. So, um, Andrew, you know, like always, you have an open invitation of whenever you want to come and chat with us. <laughs> You know, so well, apparently it was most of the month of September and early <laughs> October. September is the uh, uh, Andrew Marlow month. So <laughs> next, yeah, it was my birthday on the 29th. Away. So, oh, happy birthday. Happy belated happy birthday. birthday. Oh. Don't, don't yeah. book a, anything next September. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just West be here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you guys have anything to say to Andrew before I sign us off? No, just thank you so much for coming on. It was a blast hearing about the supplement and uh, the upcoming supplements to follow. Um, sounds like there's going to be a lot of good stuff in there for uh, cyberpunk fans. Yep. Thank you very much for having me on and, and let me talk about this because uh, cyberpunk has been a long, long friend for me uh, gaming wise.
I mean, I, I'll be happy with the weird West as well. Cause I, you know, I, like I said, I, I was actually a player in that setting and that setting was phenomenal. So I'm excited. Yeah, well, you actually inspired an entire new type. Uh, yeah. So I was pretty, I was pretty, I had a pretty fun character in that. That, that was, a, it, that never made it to YouTube, did it? Um, I don't think yours ever did. I need to, I need oh, to go see, through I, and cut out I was having troubles with my, YouTube. I was having troubles with my, with my, uh, my software that I was converting uh, video to from you know the recorded video editing it and posting it and there was an update and i think i can use it again I but i was trying to use new i was trying to learn new software and it just wasn't happening <laughs> i am apparently too old to learn the, this other software it was sad um and it, I was it too put pretty. A, that's what it was i was too pretty for you too <laughs> no you're not you guys you guys <laughs> post it all the time <laughs> you you were you were a highlight of that game though i had people i had people you know i had people ask me when's he coming back <laughs> i don't know it was a it was a ton of fun maybe you could come and run us some cyberpunk i would love to do that for you, you just let, uh, let me get a couple more of these books out yeah. and then i will let you guys make characters with all the stuff That'd be awesome. Yeah. At least all the stuff in the character creation portion. Listen, I, can, I don't want to. I don't want to wait till the end. I can recreate my my old old cyberpunk character Fader Khan. He's he's ready to make a make a reappearance. <laughs> Come out with some original. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get, get out of here, Vlad Tepish or whatever your name is. Vlad Tyros, I'm the king of the hacks. <laughs> if you like us and you like what we do, please join the Cypher Unlimited Discord. We have the largest fan run Discord. I'm talking about all things Monica games. We got almost 4,000 members. If you want to play games there, that's the spot to be. Oh, uh, you pause me? <laughs> or join our Facebook group. You know, um, it's not as big as our Discord, but there's plenty of great conversations happening there, and you can probably find the game there as well. Once again, it's talking about all things Monica Games. Or visit our online store and pick up some cool Cypher Unlimited merch, like the shirt Dean got on and the hat I got on. We got everything, you know, gifts for your wife and the children. Christmas time is coming up. Hook your wife up with a Monica I mean, a, Monica, a Cypher Unlimited mug. <laughs> Be the best husband in the world. Or, I'm living at mug or or yoga pants. Or yoga pants. Or capes. We have capes, capes. coming. We're gonna get capes. We have capes? <laughs> yes, capes oh, are coming. Capes <laughs> are coming. <laughs> or give us a little donation on coffee. Like we said, our videos will always be free, but it helps us out with little things like with Zoom calls. Speaking of our videos, give us a like, share, and subscribe on YouTube. We're really trying to bring a viewership viewership up there and we really appreciate if you you know help us out and last but not least give us a follow here on twitch you know we we'll really appreciate that as well and like always we love you guys hit those bell icons people these guys are great <laughs> <laughs> appreciate but that thank you. um but yeah thank you guys so much for stopping by um the viewers and thank you again andrew for coming on talking about your new stuff very exciting um we already had some people in the chat talking about how they uh purchased and read it so awesome stuff thank you guys out there for doing that you guys are amazing um and yeah you know we'll see you next week as usual usual time usual place and from us at the cu we will see you later